The world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter vehicles doesn't just mean electric cars and electric buses, electric trains, electric planes and yes, even electric cargo ships. It also means the world of electrified personal transport. I'm talking scooters, I'm talking skateboards and of course bicycles. Which is why I'm here outside the front of my house. You see, we've got some unboxing to do. And that's because last year in the US, there were more electric bicycles sold than electric cars and plug-in hybrids combined. Just think about that for a second. Last year, the second year of the COVID-19 pandemic, there were more electric cars and plug-in hybrids sold than ever before in the United States. And yet, their sales were eclipsed by electric bicycles. I think there's a revolution coming and I'm about to unbox one of the potential contenders if you're in the market for an electric bicycle. These are a pair of tin snips and this is the VeloWave Ranger FM TB3 electric bicycle. It's designed for adults, it's got a 750 watt electric motor. It's got a lithium ion battery pack. And we've been sent this to try it out for a couple of weeks to see what we think. First, of course, let's talk about unboxing. I'm not gonna lie. This box is not in the best condition. One end of the box is actually pretty much disintegrated. And I don't think the packing on this is particularly good. Now, before I take it out of the box, I also should note that this is a fat bike. For those who don't know, fat bikes look like mountain bikes on steroids. They have massive tires that are pumped to a very low pressure and they're great for using off-road. They're great for using at the beach. And of course, with an electric motor, 750 watts, you're gonna have a fair bit of assistance. I'll tell you some more of the specs as we unbox, but we've got some instructions on the box. So the first thing is to open the carton and then turn it upside down. Interestingly here on the side of the box, it says tips, please open the box without damaging it and keep it for some time in case of repacking needed. Thank you. I've got rid of the sellotape. So let's take a look inside. There's some more damage to the box here. Oh, and there too, it's not like the best cardboard box I've ever seen and there is a little book with instructions which is quite nice it's very glossy it says inside we know you are excited about getting going but please colon reseat and charge the battery before the first ride make sure the pedals are tight make sure the front wheel is installed properly and tight check to be sure the tires are inflated properly learn how to use the LCD display and most importantly, and I've got to give them kudos for this, wear a helmet before riding. It also says, um, please note, bike may need further adjustments after assembly, which is kind of common sense. But, you know, we are talking about a litigious society. So I'm kind of glad that that is in there. Also, very importantly, aside from having a booklet, there's an email address at the bottom, which tells you where to go if you need more support, which I really like. So Michael's helped me get it out of the box. These are very strong cable ties. Sadly, they're not reusable ones, but it does make sure that the bike doesn't get damaged in transit. And of course, because this has got disc brakes, it's very important not to damage or warp the disc brakes. I'm impressed because it's got these end caps. I've seen electric bikes that don't. Over here, we have a lovely cardboard box, very well secured box. And I suspect inside here are some tools. Okay, we've got a couple of springs and an Allen key. A random Phillips head screw. I think this is probably a charger. Let's have a look. Yep, that's a three pin power lead and an AC adapter. It's, wow, it's quite a high wattage. It's 
54.6 volts at 2 amps, which is 109.2 watts. That's quite a beefy charger. So that's for charging. And then <laughs> I didn't think that we would get all the tools we needed, but we do get some tools. So you've got your reflector. We get a, an eight and a 10 millimeter spanner or wrench if you're in America and a 13 and 15 millimeter spanner. You get, I'm gonna call this an Allen TriStar for uh, doing up things. That's kind of useful. Now I have plenty of tools, but uh, this one looks quite soft. The metal looks quite soft. So I'd worry about that a little. Uh, and then we've got one pedal, two pedals. And then what's this? This looks like my front light. Okay. And, ah, my quick release attachment for the front wheel. So let's take these off. Oh, that's nice. Handlebars are obviously detached from the bike, but that looks like not too bad a, a setup. Looks like a Shimano gear shifter there. And there's the bike underneath. I've got to say one thing that I'm really surprised about is how well this is packed because the cardboard box was deceptive. There's plastic covering all of the important bits that could quite easily get scratched. This is an aluminium frame. I'm surprised at how lightweight it is. Now bear in mind, I used to ride 700C bikes and very often they were made of alloy or they were made of steel in one case. They were pretty heavy. This, pretty lightweight. I'm sure once you put the battery in, the battery goes in this bottom bit here it will feel differently. But, you know, this seems pretty nicely put together. The welding is not the most beautiful welding I've seen, but you know, that's not bad. I've seen brand name bikes that are much worse than this. So that's not too bad. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put the handlebars on. The instruction book is a very good place to start. And something I've noticed that I really like about this bike is it has painted or stuck, I can't figure out which, on the various components, the correct torque. So here it says six Newton meters is what you should be tightening to. Unfortunately, I don't have a torque wrench that's appropriate for Allen keys, although I do have a torque wrench. So I'm just guessing at the moment but unless you're doing like severe off-road riding, I think you're gonna be okay. Just going as tight as you can. In terms of the handlebars, not badly put together. Everything seems to be pretty well machined. So we're talking about tools. It's important to have good quality tools and you can see that this has already started to round off and it's leaving metal shavings on my finger. So it is worth having a good quality tool. Now this bike has hydraulic brakes and this little doodad goes in to stop the, uh, the brakes from actually operating while it's in transit. Because if you always to squeeze these now, I push the piston out, cause all kinds of problems because hydraulic brakes It's mail time without mangling the disc. One of the advantages, of course, of having an electric bicycle is that you don't have to worry about having battery powered lights because you can utilize the battery that you're using to drive the motor to also run your lights. And in this case, this bike has a 48 volt, 15 amp hour lithium iron battery pack, and it has this rather nifty bright LED headlight that attaches to the front of the bike. Now I was given a front reflector as well as a front headlight. This is supposedly a 10 watt LED bulb. So let's just put it on. I thought I needed two spanners, but it turns out that the headlight actually has a captive 
nut kind of arrangement at the top. It's got two kind of protrusions that hold the head of the bolt in place, but only if the bolt is actually all the way out. So you either have to tighten the nut like this and hold the head out so that it doesn't spin, or you have to get another spanner. I think I'd probably be tempted to get another spanner. Let's put the paddles on. And if you've never put a bike together before, you won't know that one of the pedals is reverse threaded. I always say take your time with pedals because you kind of want them to go in right. And I've seen so many pedals that have been cross threaded over the years because people are just trying to bash them in in a hurry. This bike has a seven speed Shimano rear gear set. Doesn't have anything up front, which is a bit of a shame. I'd like to see the option to have a front derailleur here as well, because it would give you more, more choice of which gear to pick when riding. One of my biggest criticisms of electric bikes in general is that they're not geared in a way that makes it comfortable for me, but I haven't ridden it yet, so I can't say. We're almost done putting this together, but I also wanted to call out the fact that this has got adjustable front shocks. So you can adjust how soft or hard the ride is at the front end, which is something that I think a lot of people are gonna really like, especially with a fat bike, especially if you're a little bit heavier, you want to have a slightly firmer ride perhaps. A lot of people are gonna ask, why am I putting reflectors on bikes? I know a lot of people just don't bother because they come off really easily and they get broken. But the reality is as a cyclist, if you're gonna be using the road and you can use the road on this bike, it's got a top speed of 28 miles per hour if you pedal, it has both electric only and pedal assist capabilities. So top speed of 28 miles per hour if you pedal and it's assisting, 750 watts. You're gonna to wanna to be seen, especially if it's at night. And yes, you've got your light here, but your light might not be on. So reflectors are essential. I would argue that rear lights are essential too. Not everyone likes putting lights on a bike, but I try to at every opportunity. The other thing I should probably mention here is range. We're looking at between 25 and 40 miles of range per charge, depending on your weight, but also how hard you work when the bicycle is being ridden. So I'm just putting the rear reflector on here so I can find the, the screw. And I'm putting as high as possible on the seat stem here. It's not my ideal place for these, and to be honest, you're not gonna be able to see it very clearly if the seat is low, because this big fat tire is in the way. But I think if I was to own one of these and ride them for any length of time, I'd wanna put mud guards on, especially if I was gonna ride it on the road in the Pacific Northwest. If I was riding it off-road, I wouldn't bother because mud guards get so easily damaged and broken. So it depends what you're gonna use it for. But as Michael pointed out earlier on, this has got attachments for water bottles. There's one here. And also it's got an attachment for a luggage rack. It's also got attachments for mud guards. So you can kit this out whichever way you want to. The only thing left to do is to unlock the battery chamber and put the battery in. It just slides in the bottom here, lift up, push, hold it in place, as you remove the battery, there you are, it's all good. And then turn it, I think, on. So it does appear that you don't need a key to turn it on, which might be a security risk for some, but it's got a left-handed throttle and you can change your speed. There are two, three, four, five, there are five levels. And this now says it's doing 26 miles per hour. I'm not sure if it is, but it seems pretty fast. And the display is not the brightest I've seen. It's a, it's a color LCD display. Seems pretty good. I just adjusted it a bit there. It's got a trip odometer. Tells you how long you've been riding. And then it gives you the ability to switch between the various modes. It says the battery is 59% full right now. I'm gonna tighten this up before I hit on the road because this should not be movable, and it is. But other than that, let's charge it up and then 
We'll give you our thoughts in a week or two after we've had a chance to ride it. I'll let a couple of members on the team ride it. And then we'll give you our initial thoughts and reactions after a couple of weeks and we'll take it from there. There you have it. That is the unboxing and assembly video for the VeloWave Ranger FM TB3 electric fat bike with these massive 26 inch fat bike tires. We're gonna be charging this up. We're gonna be tightening everything up, make sure it works because it literally has just come straight out of the box. We didn't, we didn't look inside before we started to record this. So we discovered as you watched We'll be making a review of this in the next month or so, so keep your eyes peeled. And until next time, don't forget to hit subscribe both to this channel and to our other channel, Transport Evolve Take Two. If you like the video and you want to support us, there are links below. And as always, thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew, go out to the folks on my right for being our 15 to $49 a month supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons. That's Chris Maxwell, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Tesla in the Gong, Gordon C., Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Ray Jean Fellows, Rory Litwin, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness, Zachary Courtney, Chrissa, Centaur and Denny Hyde. My phone kept beeping, I'm sorry. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters. They are Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Christopher Lee Jones, Andrew Glenn, Paul Conway, Ellery Hensley, and Ian, if you would like to join the amazing family of supporters, you can do so by sending us Kofi, by sending us Bitcoin, or by following the links below and becoming a channel Patreon supporter, or in fact, a YouTube channel member. We have some more great content on the way, so be sure to make sure that your preferences are set in your mobile phone or your TV or your browser, whatever you use to watch the channel, and we'll be back really soon. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving.